Hi, everybody. Wow, so much is going on. And I want to thank everybody for sending me, uh, well, I want to really thank my subscriber for sending me this video that we're going to start with first. I didn't know we had actual death panels. And we do in Texas. And I'm going to let you listen to uh, just about half of this video. Everything will be linked to below, so if you want to listen to uh, what I'm not going to uh, play in my video, go ahead and click the link below. But it's a wow, and I'm going to be going through Oregon, uh, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, Texas, 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 and I'm starting with Texas, so here we go. A contentious battle is taking place at this courthouse in downtown Houston, Texas, over a law that gives hospitals virtually unlimited power to decide the fate of patients. Oral arguments took place centering on the question whether the law, called the Texas Advanced Directives Act, or TADA for short, violates patients' constitutional rights by depriving them of due process. Texas Right to Life has led the vanguard in opposing this law. The right to die eventually becomes the duty to die, and Texas is the worst state in America. We have now given the power of life to the hospitals. So Texas Right to Life has drawn a line in the sand. We have got to fight back. We have to overturn this law because we have to restore the right to life to the individual, and we have to take the power of death away from the hospitals and the doctors. Incredibly enough, their main opposition is none other than the Texas Catholic bishops, who argue the law comports with Catholic teaching. In a friend of the court brief filed last year, the bishop stated, quote, human intervention that would deliberately cause, hasten, or unnecessarily prolong the patient's death violates the dignity of the human person, close quote. But critics say the law isn't about needlessly prolonging death. Rather, it's about depriving a patient of life and hastening his death. The Texas Advanced Directives Act came to national prominence in 2015 in the case of Chris Dunn, a former EMT and Homeland Security employee who checked into Houston's Methodist Hospital in October 2015, suffering from a mass on his pancreas and renal failure. His doctor determined his quality of life warranted no further medical care, and the hospital's ethics panel agreed against the wishes of Dunn himself, who was conscious, alert, responsive, and made clear he wanted to live. A 2015 video shows Dunn practically begging to be kept alive. Do you want to stay alive? Do you, you pray? Yes, he's praying. Praying, tell you alive. Good, great. We're going to pray for you too. Dunn's mother, Evelyn Kelly, fought the hospital and with the help of attorneys secured by Texas Right to Life, got an injunction against the order, allowing her son to live another month. He passed away peacefully and from natural causes two days before Christmas. His mother sued the hospital, arguing that the Texas Advanced Directives Act is unconstitutional. I'm not, I'm not filing this law, I didn't file this lawsuit for money. I filed this lawsuit to destroy this evil law, and it is an evil law. When they found out he didn't have any insurance, they were finished with him. They, they did not give us 10 days. Now they have to give you 10 days. These ethics committee have to give you 10 days, and then they can come in and do whatever they want to to a patient. The law gives hospital ethics panels enormous power with practically no oversight. Whatever their final decisions are regarding a patient, that decision cannot be appealed. It can't be reviewed by any court. Plus, there's a loophole. You don't have to be terminally ill in order for a panel to decide you don't get to live. The culprit in this case is the statute. Criminals in Texas on death row have more rights than Texas patients in hospitals. This is shocking. The only requirement for a doctor to withdraw treatment is that he disagrees that treatment ought to be provided. It doesn't require the patient be terminally ill at the end of their life. The patient could be at the beginning of their life. 
is it is it is tragic that Texas has such a open law that allows care to be withdrawn from people who are in this case particularly praying to stay alive and the reasoning behind their decisions remains vague and unclear a doctor makes a determination that the patient's so-called quality of life does not meet the threshold for continued care but quality of life is subjective it's amorphous and it differs from doctor to doctor and hospital to hospital this and family to family and patient to patient. Okay. Uh, I don't even know what to say about this death panel that is operating in Texas. And then it goes on to talk about those who don't have insurance. Yeah. Well, just do away with them. Oh, my God. We're really here. Okay, something... Uh, very evil. Uh, you, you got these legislatures who are passing these kinds of laws. This is, you, she says, unconstitutional. The mother of that patient said unconstitutional. It, ah, uh, grossly immoral, inhumane. Yeah, this is where we are, guys. This is America. You love it? My God. Shell. Shell, okay, I posted a video on the chemical fires in Deer Park. I posted a video on Exxon Mobil just a couple of days ago, spewing its fumes from a fire. And Shell, Deer Park, Texas, Shell Deer Park, had a shelter in place order uh, concerns about benzene that had been detected. They had a shelter in place. They lifted that shelter, I guess, uh, sometime this afternoon. You know, okay. Um, did you know that there's a gas leak at most energy? Where? Oh, Texas, Georgetown. And 65 homes or 68, or is it 68, 65 businesses? Here, 65 businesses and 68 homes are still under evacuation orders, and it's been nearly a month, a month, Georgetown, Texas. Let's listen to just a few minutes. Whoops. Recap of my story from tonight. Um, I went up to Georgetown again. Many of you are probably familiar with the um, gas leak that happened um, up there, the Atmos Energy uh, gas leak that happened on February 20th. Uh, evacuations started then, and, and evacuations have continued even through tonight. Um, let me give, give me one sec. Let me go ahead and click on this. Yeah, so right now it's 68 homes and 65 businesses are still evacuated because of this gas leak. Um, some people have gotten to go back in. The number was higher yesterday, according to the city of Georgetown. Um, but I talked to Atmos Energy today and that they, they said that the, the numbers have not gone up since Friday. So uh, we're still a little confused there. But anyway, this is happening near Williams Drive and River Bend. Uh, there's a bunch of businesses along Williams Drive that are shut down. Um, and kind of the offshoot streets, I don't know how, how else to describe it besides that. But one of those uh, businesses on the offshoots is Leaps and Bounds Daycare. Now, they've been out since March 1st. So not on the first day of the evacuations, but a couple days later, um, about 11 days later, I guess, and they've been out now 19 days. So uh, obviously as a daycare that presents its own issues and its own problems. So they originally were told that they had a voluntary evacuation uh, around 3.30 in the afternoon. By 5 o'clock they said, nope, it's mandatory, you got to get out of here. Okay, what is going on? I was doing some research to find out more information about this Atmos Energy found that these people are still under evacuation orders almost a month later and found 
In my research, gas leaks are happening all over the country, and guess what? People are being evacuated. There is so much disruption happening in our country. Uh, and these corporations, you know, you got those chemical um, companies, you've got the petroleum companies, you've got the gas companies, and it does, uh, water companies, our water is poisoned. This is clearly, something's gone wrong, right? Well, we know that they are uh, causing a lot of disruption and they are bringing this country down to its knees. And there are a lot of methods that they are employing to do just that. But think about it. Okay, you're in your area and that's where you work and that's where you've lived and uh, you're not, you know, looking at all the local newspapers and local um, broadcast shows to find out what's happening in the country. So the mindset is, well, you know, you got those major events happening, the mass shootings, you got the fires, you got the flooding. But if you don't look at each state in all of these communities, you'll not realize how many people are losing money because of evacuation. Businesses are closed because of evacuations. They can't seem to fix this natural gas leak. We can't seem to get anything right, right? No, this is deliberate. Um, Dangerous Deer Park chemical fumes. So, um, did I say thank you to all of the subscribers who sent me some of this information? If I haven't, thank you. Uh, I just want to tell you, they've been saying that that chemical fire, by the way, it reignited this afternoon. They were able to put it out, I think, early this morning. It reignited this afternoon. But then I got another email from the same subscriber who said, okay, they have put that fire out. But what is it, naphtha? Haven't they been claiming that naphtha is fine? You know, it's not a dangerous chemical. Well, here, uh, naphtha releases carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide when ignited and it is highly flammable. According to the New Jersey Department of Health and Senior Services, it isn't it interesting? Um, I think this is a Texas site, but it might be New Jersey. Okay. Um, unfortunately, what have you been told in Texas? Don't worry. The air quality is beautiful. Just go on out. Take a deep, deep breath. Don't worry about ExxonMobil and Shell and this chemical company releasing all of these toxins into the, into your atmosphere, into your air. So naphtha. It can affect you when breathed in and by passing through your skin. Contact can burn the skin and eyes. Breathing naphtha can irritate the nose and throat. It can lead to headaches, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, high exposure, can cause drying and cracking of the skin. Repeated exposure can uh, damage the nervous system and may affect the kidneys. And is this, do you pronounce it saline? I'm not sure. But it's a type of solvent used in production of gasoline and it's flammable at room temperature. Um, and firefighters won't use water to fight it because xylene actually floats on water. So uh, the dangers to your health when inhaled or passing through skin can irritate the skin and eyes. Prolonged or repeated contact can cause a skin rash, dryness and redness. Inhaling xylenes can irritate the nose and throat, causing Coughing and wheezing, exposure can cause headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness, passing out, repeated exposure, 
can affect concentration, memory, vision, muscle, coordination. Higher levels can cause coma and death. It can damage the liver or kidneys, and it's very flammable. Um, and that is, let's see, what else do we have here? All right. Uh, so officials say it's the chemical compound naphtha that is burning in multiple tanks in Deer Park, uh, Harris County, Houston, Texas. The fire spread and is now burning xalene and toluene. So apparently um, the additional the additional um, substances didn't come from ITC. The air monitoring, monitoring continues and as of this update no detectable amounts of the chemicals have been found outside the ITC fence line. Really? Wow. Well, all of that smoke really made it um, beyond the fence line. Oh boy, are we being lied to. Grass fires lead to evacuations in areas around Lyons, Oregon. So I got this from those who live in Oregon and uh, it wasn't just one subscriber. Two subscribers said, we have gotten rain, we have gotten snow, uh, the ground is saturated. And you know what? They got fires and they claim that, what, a couple of days of no rain or snow dried out the area of this fire so much that, well, it started, it had just been one acre and then it jumped to, I think, 30 acres. It jumped a river and evacuations have been ordered. People were evacuated within a three quarter mile radius at around 5 p.m. Um, due to a grass fire, two fires merged into one. And if you want to know where the evacuations are in particular, click on the link below. I, I, this is amazing. Oregon wildfire jumps the Santium River. I am so sorry for my pronunciation. So if I got things wrong, okay, but you can see what I'm reading. So uh, it prompts evacuation orders. It jumped a river southeast of Salem. Prompted evacuation orders. Reported Tuesday afternoon near the North Santium State Recreation Area, which sits off Oregon 2, 22 near Lyons. It grew to an estimated 60 acres, sorry, I said 30, 60 acres by that evening and was threatening 35 homes and 30 outbuildings. Jesus. Estimated 60 acres Wednesday morning, though that figure is expected to grow once more. Uh, accurate mapping is completed. I did a brief check to see if there was any new information. I couldn't find any, so uh, you guys in Oregon, if you have an update, please leave it in the comments section. Unbelievable what is going on in this country. Yeah, love my computer. It looked like an ocean. Severe Midwest flooding could last all spring. Mike Pence takes a tour, does a, uh, takes a plane ride. It looked like an ocean. See, most Americans think these people are good people. Mike Pence, all of these people are so unbelievably evil. And because we have so many Americans who will not do any research on geoengineering or weather modification, they have no idea that this was brought 
to them as a weapon of war. And it's very upsetting to see this over and over and over again. So they expect this to go on throughout the spring. Nebraska, um, 88 cities and 74 counties have issued emergency declarations. Iowa and Missouri not doing great and we're looking at more and more flooding. But guess what? Potential bomb cyclone eyes northeastern U.S. with rain, flooding, and heavy spring snow. And I, you know, th this was on um, another uh, AccuWeather uh, article that I had pulled up. All right. This was the one that I was reading first. Entire Missouri town evacuated as historic flooding rages on throughout the central U.S. And then I look over here, trending now. Potential bombs like cyclone eyes northeastern U.S. Now, you can see the geoengineering. You can see the uh, manipulation of the frequencies. You don't even have to look all that I mean, it can be a little, little box, but you can see it happening. All right. I, I'm like looking at this thinking, this is now? This can't be now. This was like last year. We can't be having another bomb cyclone, right? Wrong. Yeah, we are. Okay, Americans. Americans, could you please, please flip that critical thinking switch in your brain? Okay, we never had bomb cyclones, and we had one that caused all of that flooding in Nebraska and Iowa, and eight states, actually, Wisconsin, um, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Iowa, South Dakota, uh, Nebraska. Did I leave a state out? I wasn't counting, but come on, guys, come on, come on, our fellow Americans. You know, we need you. We all, we, we, we really need you here. Uh, a bomb cyclone again. An again. It's going to undergo rapid strengthening with, it will bring drenching rain, coastal flooding, and heavy interior snow to parts of the Northeast and uh, West Virginia. Uh, I guess you're going to be hit first. God. <laughs> you know, I saw an article, which I didn't, I've just bookmarked, and I didn't read it. I bookmarked it to read another time. Study shows that multiple realities can exist simultaneously. <laughs> Okay, well, finally, finally an answer to what we're living. We're living multiple realities. All right. Um, I, all right, I, I don't. Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska. You're looking at states that produce an awful lot of food for this country. Food is not going to be coming from these states. It's not going to be coming. They're not going to be able to plan. Not with the flooding that they are saying that is coming. Once the snow melts and the spring rains, so these are the bomb cyclone states. I guess we're going to get a little bit, well, I won't. Spartanburg, though, I think you're going to get some rain. Um, look at this, okay? Another, like, a thousand plus mile storm. We didn't have them before. We didn't have bomb cyclones. Oh. Mike Morales heading towards, well, he's in Missouri right here. And 
Rockport, Missouri. It's phenomenal how many Americans are are really suffering. It's amazing. It's amazing. And we know our government's not going to help them. Though Mike Pence says, we're here for you, whatever you need. Well, they all say that. They all say that. And then very few get the help that they really need. Here's Mike Morales. And this was posted uh, yesterday. All right, guys, so I just made it up to Rockport, Missouri. The search and rescue teams just took off down the road. But if I can pull up here without running over anybody. This whole place is completely underwater. I mean, that is bad. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. I think I pulled in front of me there. Just trying to see that house is up to the roof, A-frame. There shouldn't be any water there. I mean, it is really, really bad. And we're not even to Omaha or Iowa yet. This is Missouri. Yeah, they get the they're getting ready to drop in the search and rescue boats. So yeah, they're getting ready to drop all the boats in, and I guess go try to pull some people out. Man, it's unbelievable. Yes, it is unbelievable. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, and I will tell you, man, I was listening to some of these videos, this one too, and I thought I was just going to burst into tears. You know, when you have lost everything, you listen to people who have lost everything, and it just makes you sick, because you know. And you don't, I don't need to be a farmer. You know, I grew up in New York. Um... I lived an entirely different life. You don't need to have the details be similar to really identify with the pain of you know, everything that you've worked for, gone. My name's Tom Bullock. I'm presiding commissioner of Hope County, Missouri. And we're standing on Highway 159, looking to the west towards Big Lake, Missouri. Well, right now we've got a new record again this morning for a flood. Never has been this high before. Every flood that comes along anymore is a new record. Yeah, new record, new record, new record. Bomb cyclones. Americans start thinking, please do some research. They are using weather as a weapon. Destroying farms. You think about, well, I've posted videos. How many farmers are filing bankruptcy? The tariffs, Trump tariffs, have destroyed so many farmers. All of the flooding that has taken place. And once again, they're having to deal with this flood. Uh, yeah, they're breaking a lot of people. It's just going. To, we're sitting here with basically all the levees around here are busted, and we haven't even got into the wet time of our season. Usually, when the river runs high is May and June. As far as I know, this hasn't been declared a disaster area yet. So if that doesn't happen. I don't know what we're going to do. We don't have money to fix everything that's broke. Not even close. I built my place there in 1978. My home is back behind me out in the water there somewhere. I haven't been there for a couple days. Uh, hopefully it's still sticking up a little bit out of the water, but after last night, water came up quite a bit last night. I, Today, I'm not really sure. Everybody's wanting to help and volunteer, and that's, that's a good thing. We've had, everybody calls me and asks, what can we do, what can we do, you know? Well, 
So far I've seen excavators and bulldozers donated and people's help donated to run them at the farmer's expense. You know, they didn't ask for this, they shouldn't have to pay for it. But they do, because that's just the way they are. A little town right north of here called Craig. That's where the they have a school there in town, and what? That's where the real water plant is for this whole area. So they've dug farmers at their own expense, brought excavators in, and dug a put a levee up around the town. They're up there filling sandbags again. It's just a mess. big 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 mess mess you know you look at this and Nebraska Iowa so many areas the water has not receded look at this do you not look at this and think about the people who live here because I can't not you know I Look at this. So all of the hay is destroyed. And the few cows, pigs that are left, you know, so many areas you can't even reach. It's so horrific. It is so unbelievably horrific. Fortunately, the families are strong, the communities are strong, and you know they're they're there doing whatever it is that they can to help one another. And I've gotten comments from people in Nebraska, and some of them have stated just that, but virtually everybody from Nebraska, and I'm going to read some of the comments, have said, it's bad. It's really, really bad. I'm in Lincoln, about an hour from the flooding in Fremont. We barely got any rain before the flooding began. Chemtrails were horrendous for many weeks. My family has been experiencing strange illnesses, much like allergies. Uh, I'm reading this because I asked in this video, you guys in Nebraska, Iowa, did you get a tremendous amount of rain that could have caused this unbelievable flooding, unbelievable flooding that came up fast and everybody from that area said no. No. Yeah. Oh, shoot. My highlighting came off. You can read the comments if you want to, but all the people from Nebraska, and I think there were about six or seven, they all said, no. The rain and even the snow, it's still, th there's no way that these floods were due to rain, that something else was happening. And yeah, I think something else is happening with a lot of the flooding. God, my computer, man. And I just, I just had to reboot. I just cleaned it up. I did everything. I'm so unbelievably frustrated. But here, farmers devastated. This is going to have a big impact on your the food on your table. Directed by historic flooding in Nebraska. At least three people have died. More water is on the way. Fifteen states are under watches and warnings as floodwaters rush downstream. Don Daler is in Nebraska. Doug and Eric Alvarez are trying to round up the surviving hogs on their nine-acre farm in Fremont, Nebraska. There aren't many. We probably lost right at 700 head. How many do you think you've been able to save? Uh, 14. 14 out of 700? Yeah. 
That's an enormous financial hit for you. Yes. The father and son have worked for three years to build this business. Then, a few days ago, the water came. What did it look like when you saw it coming in? I looked down that way and was about a three-foot wall, a hundred-foot wide, just flowing over the road. Within minutes, seven feet of water covered their farm. Within minutes, seven feet of water covered their farm. Within minutes. Something's very wrong here, guys. Under National Guard troops. Hang on. We 200 National Guard troops have been activated in Nebraska due to severe flooding. More rain is expected in the coming days, even as emergency personnel try to deal with the damage. For more on the situation, we are now joined by the governor of Nebraska, Pete Ricketts. He is in Lincoln. Uh, governor, thank you so much for joining us under very difficult circumstances for your state. Oh, thank, oh, thank you, you very much for having me on. All right, it's getting long. I don't, I, I, you can click on the link below and listen to, you know, all of the damage. But uh, so many levees were breached. Um, he said 200 miles of road, 200 miles of road need to be repaired. Um, and it's not in this one. Let me see. Did I take it out? Yeah, I probably did. Um, there was another news broadcast with this guy standing on the street, and the whole entire street was just a crumpled mess. The asphalt, the road, a crumpled mess. So he talks about 200 miles um, of road that need... Uh, repair the bridges that were co that just were taken out all of the homes the businesses so like paradise like the fires in california like harvey like baton rouge oh god the list is endless missouri 2011 there are so many people who cannot recover from these events and I I kind of feel sick just posting the video and I'm completely and utterly helpless uh, we need to we need to come together we need to come together somehow and help you know just really focus on helping people helping people because we all know this governor doesn't give a shit I'm sorry Mike Pence doesn't give a shit Trump doesn't give a shit FEMA doesn't give a shit American Red Cross doesn't give a shit Google doesn't give a shit do you? Because I do. And all I keep thinking is we've got to figure out how to help one another. 